Let's continue in our series, According to Your Faith. Matthew 9 and 27. 9 27, Jesus departed from there, and two blind men followed him and cried, saying, Thou son of David, have mercy on us. When he was coming to the house, the blind men came to him. You know, uh, just because you don't get the response you were looking for, doesn't mean you just quit and go to the house. Amen. Huh? He, uh, they, they, they called out to him, and apparently, you know, on their way to the house, they didn't get any response. But they didn't say, well, I don't guess he's got time for us or whatever. They didn't get offended and mad and leave. They just, uh, I guess they left the door open, and they just came on in the house. <laughs> and so Jesus looks up in the house, and there they are. And he says, uh, do you believe I'm able to do this? And they said, yes, Lord. <laughs> Then touched he their eyes and said, according to what? According to your faith, be it unto you. Everybody say that out loud, please. According to your faith, be it unto you. What does according to mean? According to. Hmm? A motorcycle is going to go fast according to how many horsepowers is under the gas tank. Hmm? Right? You're going to do sit ups according to <laughs> what kind of shape you're in. Is that right? <laughs> According to. Well, he said, what you're wanting, which they wanted healing. They wanted a miracle and healing. What you're wanting is going to happen according to what? Your faith. Now, by and large, the church has changed this. They've changed what Jesus said. And I mean of all manner of denominations and groups. They've changed this into according to his will is how it'll be done. And that's not what Jesus taught. But is that what most church folks believe? That you can say and do whatever you want to say and do, but how's it going to happen? According to His will. That's how it's going to happen. That's not what Jesus said. Men's religious ideas of God has changed it. In fact, if you study the New Testament, you'll find references to the will of God less than 50 times through the whole New Testament. Important, but less than 50 times through all the books of the New Testament. You'll find references to faith and believing God way over 500 times. So if we preach in line with the proportion of Scripture, we'll preach on faith 10 times more than we will the will of God. Not to diminish talking about the will of God. Let's just keep it in line with the Word. Right, right. But see, what many have done is they, they don't talk about faith. They may talk about faith in getting born again. But that's where they stop. Well, you get born, yeah, you have to believe to be born again. Well, what about after that? Well, it's up to God. Well, why isn't it just up to God whether you get born again or not? And the Bible says, as you have received Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him, what? The just 
shall walk by faith and live by faith. The same way you got born again is the way you get healed. Is the way you get your bills paid. Is the way you get protected. And how's it going to happen? According to Jesus. How's it going to happen? According to your faith. Well, if you read the next verse, they must have had faith. He touched their eyes. He said, according to your faith, be it to you. And their eyes were opened. Glory to God. Somebody say glory to God. Isn't that something? That, that, that growth just fell off that child's body. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. Is God God or is God God? I mean, has he changed? If you don't believe in miracles, you don't believe in God. You just don't. If you don't believe in miracles, you don't believe the Bible. And if you don't believe the Bible, you don't believe in God. No. Nope. God is still a miracle worker. And he's still a healer. He's never changed. People have gotten away from him, but he hasn't changed. And anybody that will come to him and believe him is going to see some things. Is going to get some results. All things are possible to him or her that believes. Jesus said it is true. Hallelujah. Their eyes were open. Go with me to Mark 9. Oh, I think we could get stirred up. Mark, the ninth chapter. Jesus uh, was up on the mount, what we call transfiguration. and He came down and a man had brought his son who had been having seizures to the disciples to get him delivered and healed. And they did everything they knew and he was not helped. Another revelation, just because somebody prays for you and nothing happens, that doesn't prove it's not God's will for you to have that. That just proved that for whatever reason, y'all didn't receive. And uh, so then he brought his, uh, his son to Jesus. In verse, uh, look at about verse 18 or so. Mark 9, 18. He told him, uh, what was happening with the boy. And he said, I spoke to your disciples. They should cast him out and they could not. Later on, they asked Jesus why it didn't work. Anybody remember what he told them? Because of your unbelief. Boy, that's the answer to a lot of questions. Why didn't it work? Because of your unbelief, Jesus said, what would most uh, church going people say today? It just wasn't God's will. We don't understand it, but it, was, it wasn't God's will. Can you see why I keep saying that? The church has changed according to your faith to according to his will. The church has changed that. Preachers have changed that. And verse 19, Jesus said, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him to me. When you brought it to folk, person after person, they couldn't fix it. Bring it to him. <laughs> Take it to him. <laughs> they brought him to him. When he saw him, his spirit tore him. He fell on the ground, wallowed foaming. He asked his father, how long is it ago since this came to him? He said, of a child. Oft times it had cast him to the fire and into the waters to destroy him. But if... You can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Why would he say if? Number of reasons. One, you know, I don't know if he's, well, probably the largest, he just took him to the disciples. Right? And they prayed and they did whatever they did and nothing happened. And so he says, if you can do something, have compassion on us and help us. And verse 23, Jesus said to him, if you can, there's a, there's a play on the phrase here, if you can. Because he said, the man said to Jesus, if you can. And so Jesus uses the phrase back to him, if you can. Believe. All things are possible 
to him that believes. Let me read another translation of that. The, uh, the Darby translation says, the if you could is if you could believe. All things are possible to him that believes. And the good news says, yes, Jesus said, if you yourself can, everything is possible for the person who has faith. Everything is possible for the person who has faith. Everything is possible for the person who has faith. Who said it? The master. Can you see what was happening? The man said, if you can do anything. In other words, it's up to you. And Jesus said, no. The if you can is if you yourself can. If you can believe. Why? Because it's not going to happen according to Jesus' anointing. It's not even going to happen according to the will of God. Now, people get mad when you say stuff like that. I'm quoting the master. Religious tradition is the one that has changed it. People say, well, God's all powerful and, and God's, yes, yes, yes. But he has ordained that this is how it works. And you can't leave up to him what he left up to you. You can't. People try. And the enemy has convinced millions that every evil thing and every bad thing is the mysterious will of God. And that they've begged and begged and prayed and prayed and done everything they need to do and don't know why God won't do it, but he just won't do it. And we're waiting on him to see if he will. It's not true. I said it's not true. They're, they're saying it's all up to him. If he won't, Lord, have, have compassion on us. Have mercy on me and do something for me. That's exactly what this man said to Jesus. What did Jesus say to him? The if you can is, is you. Believe. All things are why. It's going to happen according to your faith. That's how it's going to happen. Is this true with the new birth? Yes. Which is more important than a healing or a financial need. Is it? Most important thing of all is heaven and hell, eternity. Well, is being born again up to the will of God? No, it's not. Is it up to the power of God? Are people that are not born again today on the planet, are they waiting on God's timing? And something mysterious that it, no, no. If they will believe. Right. Is that right? If they'll believe on him and receive him and confess Jesus as Lord, they'll be born again. A lot of them could have been born again last year, 10 years ago. Is that right? 30 years ago. Amen. They're not waiting on him. Why? Because it happens according to your faith. Can you see this, friends? It's the truth, isn't it? Well, if that's true, and it is, and it means you can initiate some things. Yeah. 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 Hallelujah. It means you're not waiting on God for some things. Hmm? He's already bought and paid for yeah. by the blood of the Lamb. Is that right? Yeah. Everything, you know, when, when somebody gets to... Need, gets ready to receive Jesus and be born again, the Lord does not have to leave the throne and do something for them. Right? And when somebody needs a healing, God does not have to stir up and do something for them to be healed because when he took our sin, he also took our sickness and carried our pains. He bore the chastisement of our peace and was even made poor. Is that right? It's all been done. Hmm? It's been done. So it's not on the, the problem is not on the giving in, not on the providing in, right. not on the grace in. Right. The problem is on the receiving yeah. in, yeah. on the faith in, and much of it has been because folks have been the enemy purposely is trying to keep this hidden and try to keep people confused about this. That's true. Oh, but we're not ignorant of his devices. No, we're not. 
The Spirit of truth lives in us, and the truth makes us free. Free, free to believe, free to receive, free to overcome. Hallelujah. I think I sense some faith coming up. In, in, can, can you sense it? Faith is coming up in this place. Oh, hallelujah. Go to 2 Timothy, if you would, or they'll put it on the screen for us. 2 Timothy 1 and 12. 2 Timothy 1 and 12. Faith is not about just about knowledge. Scripture talks about the spirit of faith. The spirit of faith. It's not just about a bunch of stuff you know. You don't believe God with your head or with your intellect. You believe God with your heart. That's not talking about your blood pump, just like the heart of an oak tree, the heart of a watermelon, well, the heart of you, the core of you, the inside of you, there's a hidden man of the heart. Right? You believe God with your heart. That's not based on understanding. No. It's a choice. Faith is a choice. You ever heard somebody say, I just can't believe that? That's not true. It's never true that a person can't believe something. If they say it correctly, they'd say, I choose not to believe that. Because you could if you, if you chose to. He says, for the which cause I suffer these things, nevertheless I'm not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed. And I'm persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed to him Against that day. We, we looked at last week. Jesus said have faith in God. Now faith in God. Is faith in a person. Not just faith in a force. Or a power. Not just faith in principles. Hmm? Not just faith in faith. Right. 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 Not just faith in prayer. Hmm? There's a difference. Faith in what? Faith in Him. Him. He is a person that you can know. If you've been born again, you're acquainted with Him. You've met Him. You've experienced his presence. Doesn't mean you know all that much about him, but you at least have met him. Yes. Hmm? Yes. He is knowable. Yes. Yes. Knowable. We talk about the Holy Spirit. Sometimes people refer to the Holy Spirit as it. That's not right. No, it's, not. it's not right to refer to the Holy Spirit as it any more than be right to refer to me as it. And I said, did you see Brother Keith today? I saw it. <laughs> uh -huh. yeah. That's not nice. <laughs> no, you saw him. Right? People say, well, I don't know if God is, you know, what God is. He, she, it. Well, do you believe the Bible or not? Well, God it's him. Yeah. Right. Right? right? They need to believe what he said. Amen. He knows who he is. Yeah, he knows. <laughs> <laughs> I know, put it up again, please. I know whom I have believed. The Young's Literal says, I have known in whom I have believed. And I and have been persuaded. Is this faith? Yes. Believing, being persuaded. I've known in whom I have believed and have been persuaded that he is able. See, that's one of the questions he asked them. Do you believe I'm able? Mm -hmm. Able, that which I've committed to him to guard to that day. Faith is personal. Yeah. It's faith in the person of God. I know I'm, I'm, I'm being repetitious, but there's a reason. A lot of folks have missed it here. 
faith in all kind of stuff, but not really faith in the person of God. And uh, um, uh, this is so big. Um, go with me, please, to Hebrews, the third chapter. Last, uh, last week we got into some of this, talking about Adam and Eve. Now you're going to Hebrews 3, correct? Hebrews 3, 7 is where we'll start. But we talked about Adam and Eve and what happened to them. And why, I mean, what happened with them obviously was as serious as it gets for, for them to be cast out of the, the garden and, and them to die spiritually. I mean, if it was some minor thing, it, that wouldn't have been the results, the repercussions. Why was what they did so serious? Look, look at this. In, in Hebrews 3, 7, he said, As the Holy Ghost says, Today, if you will hear His voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation. Hardness of heart and unbelief go together. Yes, they do. They're, they're linked. Harden not your hearts, as in the provocation in the day of temptation in the wilderness. When your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works forty years, Wherefore I was grieved with that generation. Well, if God is grieved, there is reason why. Hmm? This is not some little light nothing thing. If it grieves God, that's because it's so serious. Well, we need to see it how He sees it. If He sees it as gravely serious, how should we see it? Gravely serious. I was grieved with that generation and said, they do always err in their heart. They've not known my ways. So I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. Them not getting to go into the promised land, that's serious. Them wandering around out of there in the desert and dying relatively young and dying in a hard, dry, barren existence, that's serious. Right? Right? Serious. Well, the results show the seriousness of what they did. It, the, the, the repercussions wouldn't have been this serious, except what they did was so serious. Take heed, brethren, he warns us, lest there be in any of you a what? Evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. Here he calls unbelief evil. Now this is not how many see this. Well, we all doubt some, you know. It's, it's all, we all doubt. And it's no big deal. But to God, it's a big deal. Evil. Why would you say this? Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. Now, now their unbelief was connected with hardness of heart, and the result was them unhooking from God. He didn't leave them. They left Him. It was their choice. Verse 13, but exhort one another... Daily while it's called a day, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Well, go with me to Numbers 13, and let's remind ourselves of, of what happened here. Sit out loud, Lord, open my eyes. Help me to see the seriousness of unbelief. We want to see it the way he sees it, right? Yes. Numbers 13. These people have seen some stuff yeah. by Numbers 13. They have been delivered out of uh, centuries of slavery. 
And there was no way Pharaoh was letting them go. No way. But he did. <laughs> God showed himself so mighty, so powerful. And a lot of it's not that relevant to us, but thing after thing after thing was something that the Egyptians worshipped. And something that was a God in their society or something that was, you know, and God just walked over it. Hmm? And even they, they had uh, people who were practitioners of dark arts. And they could do some things. And for the first couple of things, they kind of went toe to toe with uh, Moses and Aaron in those miracles. Remember that? He threw down his rod, turned into a snake. They said, we can do that too. Remember that? Smith said, oh, that's just a fairy tale. It's what you think. Spiritual things are real. If you think you're so smart and you think that can't be, study the, the existence and the qualities of matter and energy and quantum physics and see what the experts say. And they begin to get into multi-dimensional reality. <laughs> if I can't see it with my eyes, put my hand on it, it don't exist. <laughs> no, no, these things are real. It's, people don't want to talk about it. It scares them, but it's real. What about Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John and the spiritual activity that Jesus dealt with? Nothing to be scared of. You need to know who you are. You need to know your rights in, in, in Christ. You need to know the, the, the power in the name of Jesus. But you don't need to go around with your head in the sand acting like, you know, this physical is all there is. But they didn't make it but a couple of rounds. And then they came in with sores all over their body. And they told the king, this is God. We need to back off. <laughs> you need to let these people go. And uh, he didn't do it. But. What I'm saying is through all the plagues, through all the splitting of the Red Sea, I mean on and on and on, these people have seen God in demonstration. Right? right? Yeah. They have heard and they have seen and they have experienced. And now here they are to the promised land that he chose for them and he said, I've given it to you. Go up and possess it. So they sent spies into the land, one from each tribe, and he said, go check it out, what kind of people's there, what kind of land it is, bring some of the, the produce and, and tell us, give us a report. When they came back, they brought the report. Is that right? In verse uh, 25, Numbers 13, 25, they returned from searching of the land after 40 days. And they went and came to Moses and to Aaron and to all the congregation of the children of Israel to the wilderness of Paran to Kadesh. And they brought back word to them and to all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. And they told him, We came to the land whither you sent us, and surely it flows with milk and honey, just like the Lord said. And this is the fruit of it. Nevertheless, but, but, the people be strong that dwell in the land. And the cities are walled and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. They were giants. The Amalekites dwelt in the land of the south, and the Hittites, and the Jebusites, and the Amorites, uh, in the mountains, and the Canaanites by the sea. It's full of ites. <laughs> and big ones. Big ites. <laughs> and Caleb interrupted and still the people. And he said, let's go up immediately at once and take this. Possess it. This is what faith does. Faith is a possessor. Now you can't take something that God has not given. But God had already given it to them. 
But just because God gives you something, that does not mean you'll enjoy it. That's true. What has been given by grace must be possessed, must be received by faith. Is that right? This is such a perfect picture of it here. Had God given them the land? He did. You read, these, you read these in the previous chapters. You read Deuteronomy 1. And those, he said, I have given you the land. Go up and possess it. That's what he said. And they said, we can't do it. He said, let's go up right now. Because we are well able to overcome it. Now, he's not, he's not, talking, he's not walking beside. Is he? Where did he get this? We're well able. You're not bigger than they are. You don't have better equipment than they do. Where did he get this? He, he's counting on God's help. But the men that went up with him said, we be not able. Now, have you heard this before? With Adam and Eve, God said, you eat the fruit of this tree, you'll die. What did the devil say? You, you, you're not going to die. You won't die. This this is where, where do you get faith? By hearing That's right. what God said. Where do you get unbelief? Amen. By hearing what the enemy said and choosing to believe that over what God said. And this is why it's evil. Do they have any reason to doubt God? Has he done anything, not been faithful to his word? Has he done anything that they could point to and say, well, we don't know if we can trust him for sure on this? No. Not one thing. Have they seen any reason to believe him and trust him? I mean, sign after sign and miracle after miracle. With all of this in front of you. And then you say, I'm going to believe this. It's evil. It's evil. We're not able to go, they said, because they're stronger than we. Just the opposite of what Caleb said, and Caleb is saying what God said. And they brought up a what? What? Evil report of the land. That, and that's where the evil unbelief came from, was from hearing the evil report. Where did the evil unbelief come from? From hearing the evil report. <laughs> How do you get good faith? From hearing the good news. Good report. How do you get evil unbelief? Hearing the evil bad. Bad report. You know, we sing a song sometimes, whose report? Will you believe? We will believe the report of the Lord. His report says I am free. His report says I am healed. His report. Well, good faith comes from hearing, receiving the good report. But you're going to have to choose. Because everything that comes your way is not going to be good report. No, it's not. In the Psalms, he talks about his heart. The psalmist is not heart is not moved, though he hears evil tidings. His heart is not moved. Still believe the good report, even though you're hearing and seeing some bad things. They heard and saw some bad things, and they said, "No, that's it. We can't do it." We can't do it. And they brought up an evil report. Chapter 14 and 1. All the congregation lifted up their voice and they cried. And the people wept that night. And, and all the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron and the whole congregation uh, unto them. They said, would God would have died in Egypt. Would God wish we'd have died in the wilderness. They got death on the brain. Dying, dying. They want to talk about dying. Caleb and Joshua wants to talk about going and getting those nice houses and, and, and those vineyards and those orchards. 
Let's go get them. And the other bunch is we all going to die. We're going to die. We're going to die out here. We're all going to die out here. What's the problem? They believed it. They said it. You couldn't convince them of anything else. What happened? They died out there. Except for Joshua and Caleb who wouldn't sing that song. <laughs> they said, you can sing that if you want to. But I'm going over to the other side. God, my Savior and Deliverer, in my ship abides. Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm going over. And they did. Joshua and Caleb outlived all of them and went in and possessed because they had faith and these guys doubted. Oh my. They said, why did the Lord uh, had brought us into this land to fall by the sword and our wives and our children should be a prey? Were it not better for us to return to Egypt? Let's go back. Deuteronomy 1, I think it was verse 25 or so, they said it's because the Lord hated us that he brought us out here to kill us. Now that's a lot of trouble just to kill somebody. I mean, <laughs> right? I mean, <laughs> he, he went through all those miracles. Is that right? Split the Red Sea, all of it just to get them out there to kill them in the desert. Now, now we're laughing, but most of the crowd believed that. They believed. Why did they believe that? Had God done something to them to cause them to think that about him or to believe that? No. What had he done? Everything he had said had come to pass. They are out of Egypt. They're out. They're free men and women. Their parents weren't. Their grandparents weren't. Their great-grandparents weren't. Not only that, they got money in their pockets. He brought them out with silver and with gold. And their bodies are healed. There was not one feeble person among their tribes. Yeah, it's been exciting and challenging, but here you are. Free. And they take one look at the giants. Most of the people didn't even see the giants. They're just listening to these other guys. Oh, they're too big. They're too big. It's too hard. It's too much. Never going to happen. Never going to happen. Well, we're going to die out here. And 99% and of the bunch, the adult population there, they said, well, that's it. Can't do it. Ain't going in. It grieved God. It grieved him. He's a person. Their remarks, their response, he's taking it personally. He said, it's a good land. It's a good, I, I searched it out. I picked it out for you. It flows with milk and honey. They said, oh yeah, yeah, you got the grapes and it's just pretty. Yeah, yeah, but, but giants, walls, they said, they, they changed it's a land that flows with milk and honey too. It's a land that will eat you up. And, and the Lord said, you slandered my land. You, you're berating and slandering and despising. I'm quoting scriptures now from Psalms and different places. You've despised my good land that I gave you. Is God real? Does he hear? Yes. Does he feel? Yes. Oh yeah. Yes, he does. He's not flighty. He's not weak. He's not easily upset. He's not unstable. <laughs> but he has a heart. Right? And it matters. If we believe him or if we, or if we don't. Or if we trust him or if we don't. We don't want to try his patience. We don't want to try his long suffering. We, we don't want to be slow to believe or never believe. We want to be quick 
to believe and quick to demonstrate we trust Him. Right? Come on, somebody say, Lord, I trust you. I, I, I don't doubt you. I trust you. Down in verse 11, Numbers 14, 11, the Lord said to Moses, how long will this people provoke me? How long will it be ere they believe me? Now this is what Jesus was saying when he came down from the mountain. Oh, faithless and unbelieving generation, how long? Hmm? Same thing. Faith pleases God. Unbelief irritates Him. Irritates Him. Why? It's unreasonable. Put yourself in His place. Put yourself with other people. You never lied to them. You never let them down. Everything you ever told them, you did for them. You've all, always been obvious. You were looking out for them. You had their best interest at heart. You were taking care of them. And one thing comes along and they believe that instead of you. Did that bless you? Uh -uh. Keep reading. How long will this people provoke me? How long will it be ere they believe me? For all the signs which I have showed among them. The Lord was grieved with their unbelief. And if you read, I won't take the time to read all of it, but he said these ten times they've provoked me. Had they seen some things? Did they have reason to believe? Then it's unreasonable that they doubt him now. That they don't trust him. And that time after time after time, every time something comes up, you should remember. Well, he brought us through the last 450 times. Yep. Right? Why do every time you go, oh God, we're going to die? Well, God's still here. He brought you through last time and the time before. Why do you immediately throw up your hands and go, oh God, I'm going to die? Why? The enemy, all the enemy has to do with them. So many people just come and whisper in their ear, you ain't going to make it. And they go, oh, I ain't going to make it. You're a child of God. You got the greater one on the inside of you. You've seen miracles. You've seen healings. You've experienced things. Why would we be so quick to doubt? Come on, somebody say, I'm not a doubter. I'm not, I'm not a doubter. I'm a believer in God. Hallelujah. Go with me to Mark. Obviously, there's a lot we could... We could see here, but for time's sake, go, go with me to Mark. Thank you, Father. 16. Mark 16. <laughs> Why do I bring 10 pages of notes? <laughs> well, you'd want me to be prepared, right? You, would it be better to have too much than not enough, right? So, Go ahead and load both barrels. <laughs> Even if you only shoot one, right? So. Mark uh, 16 and 9. 16 9. Now when Jesus was risen early the first day of the week, he, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had cast seven devils. She went and told them that had been with him as they mourned and wept. Now let's just stop. Are they expecting a resurrection? You're not mourning and crying if you're expecting resurrection. And they, when they had heard that he was alive and had been seen of her, what'd they do? Believed not. Who is this? People Chosen, handpicked by Jesus, traveled with Jesus, ate with Jesus, heard his teaching and preaching, saw the miracles, and they what? Can you see why when Jesus, he came down out of the mount and he, he ran right into the disciples and their failure to get the boy set free. Why? Because of their unbelief. 
the man looking at him saying, it's all up to you. If you care, why don't you do something? What's he say? Oh, faithless and unbelieving generation, how long will I put up with you? Then he says, bring him to me. <laughs> but we, we need to see it through his eyes. This pervasive sarcasm and second guessing and unbelieving and reluctance to trust him is not okay with him. That's right, it is not. He doesn't just look at humanity and go, well, bless their hearts. They don't know any better. Because mm -mm. we've seen better. We've heard better. And ought to do better. Jesus said, have faith in God. Trust Him. You got no reason not to trust Him. You got every reason in the world to trust Him. Our initial response with everything should not be fear, panic, reasoning, questioning, negativism. It should be, well, God brought us through everything else. He'll get us through this too. Is that right? You don't have to know how. That should be our immediate response to everything. Well, you just got a bill, you owe $10,000. Whew, okay. Well, God's paid every other bill we had. Is that right? We got a bad report. Well, God healed me of other things. He'll heal me. Is that right? Healing is mine. Our immediate response. Boy, I like what that young lady said. No weapon formed against me. We'll prosper. If you only know one verse, that's a good one to know. <laughs> Got her out. Got her out. But how do many people respond? They don't respond like that. People have been to church for 40 years. Many of them, they don't respond like, oh no. Oh no. What? Me? Why is this happening to me? No faith. No expectation of good. Depression. Anger, resentment, fear. This is you casting a, a shadow on the character of God. That's why it's evil. Notice, she said, I saw him. I saw him. And they said, mm -mm. So basically, she says, I saw him. And they say, we don't believe it. Well, they just do. They're calling her a liar or crazy. Right? <laughs> After that, he appeared in another form to two of them as they walked and went in the country. And they went and told it to the residue. And what? They said, well, here's somebody else that saw him today, too. Maybe there's something to this. Uh, no. no. They didn't believe them either. Afterward, he appeared to the eleven as they sat at meat. And the first thing he did was upbraid them. <laughs> What's upbraid? It, it, it ain't a commendation. You ever had an upbraiding? <laughs> What's an upbraiding? He reproved them. He corrected them. He upbraided them because of their unbelief and their hardness of heart. Why? About specifically because they did not believe them that had seen him after he was risen. That's the first thing. I mean, you think, man, we got, we got resurrection. We got the master standing here in the room in his glorified body. This is a wonderful time. He says, why didn't you believe? <laughs> Which is a very good question. Why? Well, let me, let me just, this, there's so much of this in the Bible, but let, let me uh, remind you. In Matthew uh, 17, don't turn to these, but in Matthew 17, this is way before any of this happened. While they were in Galilee, Jesus told them, the Son of Man is going to be betrayed into the hands of men. They'll kill him. The third day he'll be raised again. 
few chapters later, Matthew 20, Jesus was going to Jerusalem. And he took the 12 disciples apart in the way. And just because maybe they didn't get it the first time, he said, we're going to Jerusalem. The Son of Man is going to be betrayed to the chief priests, to the scribes, and they're going to condemn him to death. They're going to deliver him to the Gentiles to mock and discourage. They're going to crucify him. They're going to spit on him. But the third day, he'll rise again. They've heard this. That's just the two times we know of. Can you see why he was fully justified in upbraiding them? What, what do you mean? These are people you know, people you trusted. Had Jesus ever lied to them? Did they have any reason to doubt him? Did they have all kind of reasons to believe him? That's why it's evil. Evil, unbelief like this. This is a stubbornness of heart. This is a refusal to believe when you've got every reason to believe. Somebody say, not me, not me. By the grace of God, I'm not going to be like that. No, no. That's why it was so serious when Adam and Eve, who knew God, who fellowshiped with Him personally, is that right? Yeah. Every day. Had He ever told them anything wrong? Had He ever been wrong about anything? No. We don't know how long they were with Him like that. It could have been a long time. Could have been centuries. Could have been longer. I don't know. Mm -hmm. And had he ever been wrong about one thing? Had he ever tricked them or misled them or deceived them? Ever. No. Ever. And here comes the enemy and tells them one lie. Right. And they cast aside trusting him and believe the devil right. instead of God. Somebody say evil, 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 evil. And that's why the repercussions were so serious. Because it wasn't just a, a mistake. It was a choice to believe bad things about the character of a perfect God who's never been anything but wonderful to you. So that's why when the first thing he does when he sees them after he's been raised from the dead is reprove them, right. upbraid. Upbraid is abrasive. That's right. That's right. <laughs> but sometimes you need right. a good upbraiding. That's right. hmm? And what was it about? Not believing. That's, right. That's what it was about. In Hebrews, I believe it's the, uh, the 10th chapter, he said, let us draw near with a true heart, in full assurance of faith. This is why Abraham was counted the friend of God. God took him outside, said, look up into the night sky. I would think it would be a, a brilliantly clear night. Right? And they didn't have all the light pollution we've got today. He's out with no, they don't, have, they don't have any electricity and no pollution. And you know, I believe the Lord would have just had an exceptionally clear night to do this. He probably cleared it up even more extra. And he said, look at those stars. He's looking at them thinking, wow, I don't think I've ever seen this many stars out at night because you know he's looked at them many, many times. He said, can you count all these stars? How many are they? He probably didn't try for any length of time. He said, God, I, I can't, I don't know how many. It's a lot. It's not just a lot. It's a mega lot. <laughs> it's a humongous, ginormous, who knows. He said, that's how many children you will have. Well, he's older. Sarah's older. She couldn't conceive when she's young. It's, it seems impossible. If there's any number of things you could get to thinking about and think, well, how could that be? But what did, what did the scripture say? He 
believed in God. He believed in Him. And, and, and Romans 4 describes it. That Abraham, he, 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 didn't, he didn't waver in doubt. He was fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able to perform. Isn't that what Paul is saying? I know in whom I have believed. It is not just faith in principles. Come on, this is not just faith in prayer, not just faith in religious ritual. This is faith in someone, someone who is real and knowable. And he, did Abraham understand that? He didn't begin to understand that. But what? He said, I, I don't, I'm, I'm going to paraphrase. He's thinking, I don't know how that could be and I don't know how this could be, but I know you. <laughs> I know you. And if you said it, you can do it. Isn't that what Romans says? He was fully. He's not wrestling with it. He's fully persuaded that what God, what he had promised, he was able to perform. Glory to God. Young, unmarried girl, angel tells her, you're going to conceive. That, which, that holy thing that's going to be born of you. Be called the son of God. She said, well, you know, I, I'm not married. don't have a husband. Never been with a man. How, how, how's that going to work? He said, the power of the highest is going to come over you overshadow you. She said, here I am. Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Be it unto me according to what you just said. Did she understand all that? No. But she had faith in the one who sent that angel. What did, what did he say in Hebrews 10, 22? Having a true heart, full assurance of faith. Having a heart sprinkled from an evil, evil, conscious. Our body is washed with pure water. Verse 23. Let us do what? Hold fast the profession. That's usually translated confession of our faith. What? Without wavering. Don't let anything cause you to doubt him. Why? For he is faithful. That promised. That's, right. <laughs> That's why we hold on to it. And we won't turn loose. And we keep believing it. And we keep saying it. It's not just faith in ourselves. It's not just faith in confession. It's not just faith in faith. It's not just faith in prayer or in church or in this. It's faith in Him. Oh, hallelujah. And He is faithful. That promised. Stand on your feet, everybody. Glory be to God.